A lot of people ask the question whether or not they should run Blur and Noise Exterminator or other Blur and Noise editing processes and other editing processes as well before or after stretching, including curves adjustments. My experience is that you should run them after. And since there is a lot of talk and debate about this topic, I thought I'd make a quick video just demonstrating with hard outcomes. So here is an image I shot of the Elephant's Trunk Nebula last night. It was about a 90% full moon, not quite 90, but getting close. So there was a lot of ambient lights in the sky. I picked the Elephant's Trunk Nebula because it was to the north and it would be more or less on the opposite side of the moon throughout the entire night. So even despite all the moonlight with the judicious use of a filter, I was able to get some okay information. Excuse the dust blotches, I see they're there. And it looks like after I make this quick little video, I just need to pop out to the observatory and make some new flat frames. But for now, this image will do. In fact, the dust blotches in there make it a little bit better. It's, it's a flaw that will help to demonstrate the pros and cons here a little better. Flaws tend to stand out more and more as we edit them. So what I've done here is I've run the XISF file from PixInsight twice. And I've already removed the stars with Star Exterminator for the purposes of this video. On the left side, you can see the results of running Noise and Blur Exterminator before stretching the histogram and adjusting curves. As you can see, it looks pretty sloppy. On the right, you can see the same image, except the Noise and Blur Exterminators have been run after adjusting the histograms and curves. Now, the image looks much neater, but it's also dimmer, duller, the contrast in the colors needs to be worked up more. Let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. We're just going to go ahead and open up the curves tool and further refine both the contrast, the luminosity, and the saturation. I'll speed through this process here. All right, with that adjusted, now I'm going to go ahead and touch up the other image where the noise and blur exterminators were run before stretching the curves. I'm just going to try to make the very best of the image in the same way that I did with the previous image so that this is as fair a comparison as possible. Now I'm just going to quickly stretch the stars and adjust their color using the exact same methodology that I went over in my previous video on how to manually quickly use the histogram transformation tool and the curves tool to get perfect stretches every time. I find that with the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, making the stars a bit brighter and emphasizing their luster really helps to bring out the beauty of that nebula. Now I'm going to pop over to Affinity Photo to composite the star plate over the nebula plate. I'm going to use almost exactly the same processes. The one difference being, I'm really going to do my best to bring the most out of both images, to make them both as beautiful as possible so that we are comparing apples to apples here. And here we are, the finished images. On the left, you see the results of running Blur and Noise Exterminator before stretching the histogram and adjusting the curves. On the right, you see the results of running Blur and Noise Exterminators after stretching the histogram and adjusting the curves. And there is a clear winner here. It, it's not really subtle at all. The right image is cleaner, there is much less noise, and there is a better gradient of dynamic range. I'm bringing this up because I remember when I first started using Blur and Noise Exterminator, I read around on a lot of boards and I saw a lot of advice to run the Noise and Blur Exterminator first before adjusting the histogram or the curves. And I simply have not found that to be good advice. I believe in the scientific method and I always test what I'm told and the tests don't hold up to that advice. I find that almost without exception, the best order to do things is remove your stars before you make any transformations to the image then adjust your histogram and curves. And when you have it to your satisfaction, then and only then run the Noise Exterminator and Blur Exterminator in that order, Noise Exterminator and Blur Exterminator. I hope that helps. Let me know if you find that to be a useful tip. Now get out there and shoot the sky.